Ashwood, a city nestled at the foot of Mount Silvius, lived in blissful ignorance. Life was simple. People were kind. The town thrived on a sense of community where everyone knew each other and strangers were welcomed with open arms. The air was always filled with the scent of blooming flowers and freshly baked bread, creating an atmosphere of warmth and comfort. Laughter echoed in the streets. Children played without a care in the world, their giggles blending with the sounds of merchants calling out their wares and musicians playing cheerful tunes. The town square was always bustling with activity, a hub of joy and camaraderie. The mountain, a silent guardian, watched over them. Its presence was a constant, a towering figure that seemed to promise safety and stability. The townspeople often looked up at its peak, feeling a sense of reassurance and peace. No one remembered a time of hardship. The streets were clean, the houses well kept, and the gardens lush and green. It was as if the town had been untouched by the passage of time, a perfect snapshot of tranquility. Peace had become their way of life. The townspeople went about their days with a sense of contentment, enjoying the simple pleasures of life. They gathered in parks, shared meals, and celebrated festivals with great enthusiasm. Generations had lived and died under the mountain's gaze. The history of Ashwood was rich with stories of love, loss, and triumph, all unfolding under the watchful eye of Mount Silvius. The mountain had seen it all, from the town's humble beginnings to its present-day prosperity. It was a source of comfort, a symbol of permanence. The mountain's shadow stretched over the town, a reminder of its enduring presence. The townspeople took solace in its stability, believing that as long as the mountain stood, so would their way of life. The old tales of its fury were forgotten. Stories of volcanic eruptions and earthquakes were now just myths buried in the pages of dusty old books and ancient scrolls. The younger generations had never experienced such events and found it hard to believe that the mountain could ever be anything but benevolent. They were nothing more than bedtime stories whispered by grandmothers to wide-eyed children. These tales were told to entertain, not to warn. The children listened with fascination, but the fear that once accompanied these stories had long since faded. The mountain was their protector, not their destroyer. To the people of Ashwood, Mount Silvius was a guardian, a steadfast presence that shielded them from the outside world. They lived in harmony with the mountain, believing that it would always watch over them and keep them safe. One moonless night, the wind carried a new story. It was a night unlike any other, where the darkness seemed to have a life of its own, whispering secrets to those who dared to listen. The trees swayed violently as if trying to warn the world of an impending doom. A whisper at first passed from ear to ear. It was a soft murmur, barely audible, yet it carried a weight that made hearts race. People huddled together, sharing the tale in hushed tones, their eyes darting around nervously as if the very act of speaking could summon the creature. A chill ran through the city. The once bustling streets were now eerily quiet, with only the occasional sound of footsteps echoing through the night. The air was thick with tension and an unspoken fear gripped the hearts of the residents. It spoke of a creature of darkness, a demon of immense power. Legends of old resurfaced, tales of a being that thrived in the shadows, feeding off the fear of the living. It was said to be a harbinger of doom, a force that could not be reckoned with. It was said to be black as night with eyes like burning coals. Those who claimed to have seen it described a pair of fiery eyes that pierced through the darkness, leaving a trail of terror in their wake. The mere thought of those eyes sent shivers down the spine. Fear, a forgotten emotion, stirred in the hearts of the people. For years the city had known peace, but now an ancient dread resurfaced. Faces that once bore smiles were now etched with worry, and laughter was replaced with anxious whispers. The stories of the demon grew with each retelling. What started as a simple whisper soon became a full-blown legend. Each person added their own twist, their own fears, until the demon became an unstoppable force in the collective imagination of the city. It was seen in the shadows, a fleeting glimpse of darkness. Some claimed to have seen it lurking in alleyways, a dark silhouette that vanished as quickly as it appeared. Others spoke of hearing its eerie whispers, a chilling sound that echoed in the dead of night. The city held its breath, waiting for the truth to reveal itself. Every creak, every rustle was met with bated breath. The anticipation was palpable, and the city seemed to be on the edge of a precipice, waiting for the moment when the demon would finally reveal itself, and the whispers would become a terrifying reality. 
The demon appeared in the city square. It stood tall, casting a long shadow in the moonlight. Its eyes, burning red, scanned the terrified faces. Silence fell upon Ashwood. The demon spoke, its voice a deep rumble that shook the ground. The mountain sleeps no more, it boomed. Its fury will be unleashed. Heed my warning or face its wrath. The demon vanished. The prophecy hung in the air, heavy and ominous. Panic spread through Ashwood like wildfire. The demon's words echoed in their minds. The mountain, once a source of comfort, now loomed over them, a harbinger of destruction. The city, once vibrant with life, was now gripped by fear. Some dismissed the demon's warning as madness. Others packed their belongings, preparing to flee. The city council convened, their faces etched with worry. They argued, debated, but found no solution. The prophecy had sown the seeds of doubt and fear. Section 5. The Mountain Rumbles. Days turned into weeks, each one filled with growing dread. The mountain, once silent and serene, began to stir. A low rumble echoed from its depths. The ground trembled beneath their feet. Ashwood held its breath, waiting for the inevitable. The sky, once clear and blue, was now choked with smoke. Ash rained down on the city, covering everything in a layer of grey. The air was thick with the smell of sulphur. The demon's prophecy was coming to pass. Section 6. Day of Devastation. Then it happened. Mount Silvius erupted, a pillar of fire shot into the sky, splitting the heavens. Molten lava flowed down its slopes, consuming everything in its path. The ground shook violently. Buildings crumbled like toys. Ashwood's peaceful existence was shattered. The air was filled with the screams of the terrified. People ran through the streets, desperate to escape the inferno. But there was nowhere to hide. The fury of the mountain was unstoppable. It was a scene of utter chaos and destruction. Section 7, Seeking Answers in the Ruins. When the smoke cleared, Ashwood was gone. The once proud city was now a smouldering ruin. The air was heavy with the smell of death and ash. The survivors gathered, their faces etched with grief and despair. They had lost everything, their homes, their loved ones, their way of life. They looked upon the devastation, their hearts filled with a profound sense of loss. How could their protector, their mountain, turn against them? As the sun began its final descent, casting long shadows over the ruins, a figure emerged from the dust. The demon! It stood tall, its eyes burning with an eerie light. The survivors, their fear now replaced with anger, turned to face their tormentor. You did this, they cried. You brought this destruction upon us. The demon regarded them with a cold, unwavering gaze. No, it boomed, its voice echoing through the ruins. You brought this upon yourselves. For generations, the demon continued, you have lived in blissful ignorance. You have forgotten the power of the mountain, the power of nature itself. You have taken its bounty for granted, disrespecting its might. The survivors listened, their anger giving way to shame. The mountain does not discriminate, the demon said, its voice softening slightly. It does not punish without reason. It acts on its own accord, a force of nature beyond your control. This is the lesson you must learn. The demon turned to leave, its form fading into the gathering darkness. Rebuild your lives, it said, its voice a fading echo. Remember the lesson of Ashwood. Respect the power of nature or face its wrath once more. And then it was gone. The survivors stood amidst the ruins, the demon's words echoing in their hearts. They had learned a painful lesson, one etched in the ashes of their city. As the sun rose, casting its warm glow on the devastated land, they began the long and arduous task of rebuilding. From the ashes of Ashwood, a new city rose. This city was not just a collection of buildings and streets, but a testament to human resilience and ingenuity. It stood as a beacon of hope, a symbol of what can be achieved when humanity works in harmony with nature rather than against it. It was a city built on respect, a respect that was deeply ingrained in every brick and every blade of grass. The architects and planners had a vision, one that included green spaces, gardens and trees that would not only beautify the city, but also serve as a constant reminder of the importance of nature, on the understanding that nature's power is not to be trifled with. The people of Ashwood had learned this lesson the hard way, through the devastating wildfires that had once ravaged their land. 
They knew that nature could be both a nurturing mother and a fierce adversary. The mountain, once a symbol of destruction, became a reminder of their resilience. It stood tall and proud, casting its long shadow over the city as if to say, I am here and I will endure. The mountain was no longer a threat, but a guardian watching over the city and its inhabitants. The tale of Ashwood and the Black Demon became a legend passed down through generations. Elders would gather the young ones around the fire and recount the story, their voices filled with both sorrow and hope. The legend was more than just a story. It was a lesson, a guide for future generations. It served as a cautionary tale, a warning to never underestimate the power of nature. The old books and warning signs scattered throughout the city were constant reminders of the past, urging the people to live in harmony with their environment. A reminder that even in the face of nature's fury, there is always a glimmer of hope. The storms and natural disasters that once brought despair now served as opportunities for growth and renewal. The people of Ashwood had learned to see the silver lining in every cloud. Hope and resilience can prevail. The community came together, rebuilding their homes and their lives with a sense of purpose and unity. The sunrise over the recovering landscape was a daily reminder that every end is a new beginning and that respect for the natural world is not just a virtue but a necessity. The act of planting trees and creating green spaces was more than just an aesthetic choice, it was a commitment to a sustainable future. The harmonious coexistence with nature became the cornerstone of their urban design, ensuring that the city of Ashwood would thrive for generations to come.